What Hello, are you this is Eddie's TV. Eddie's TV. We've come back for another night's sleeping uh, and story reading. And tonight Eddie's going to read me Hoot. No, you're going to read it. Oh, I'm going to read Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> and we got this from school because I read four times. Mm -hmm. He read four times and then he got entered into a drawer where he won a free book. And he yeah. Got hoot. Out of a tin. And we and and uh, the girl who picked me was Rose. Oh, she didn't know it was me because it was wrapped up. Oh. And I went to the table and picked this book because you you guys who probably are watching this video know I love cuddly, don't you? Come on, let's read the book then. It was the middle of the night and all the toys should have been fast asleep, but Little Bear was wide awake. He leaned over and tugged on Rabbit's ear. Wake up, he whispered. I heard a funny noise. What sort of noise? muttered Rabbit sleepily. Well, first there was a thump, then there was a... Crash! Woo! said Little Bear. Do you think it was a ghost? Probably just the wind outside, said Rabbit, sitting up and staring into the darkness. And they both, that's when they both heard a noise. It doesn't really sound like wind, does it? said Little Bear nervously. Without warning, a white shape drifted past the bed. Rabbit and Little Bear dived under the bedclothes. What's that? whispered Little Bear. I'm not sure, said Rabbit. Has it gone? I daren't look, said Little Bear, with his head still covered in the sheet. I will wake Bramwell and ask him. Hello. Get your feet down, darling. Sorry, that's our, sh that's our little brother. He wriggled under the bedclothes and shook Bramwell's paw. Wake up, he whispered. There's something in the room. It's whizzing about and saying, Woo! Wind, I expect, said Bramwell. Why are you both hiding? We saw it, said Rabbit, but we didn't want it to see us. By now, the toys were wide awake, and it was the middle of the night. Um... It's the middle of the night, grumbled Duck. What are you all doing? We saw something whiz past the bed, said Little Bear. I suppose it said, woo, said Duck. How did you know, asked Little Bear. Old Bear was just about to tell everyone to go back to sleep when there was a louder woo. Woo! This time it came from the other side of the room. He reached over and turned on the bedside light. I'm sure it's just the wind under the door, he said. But I'd better go and see. He slid down from the bed, rummaged around in the drawer for a torch, and then set off to investigate. Come on, put that toy down now. Okay. While they were waiting for Old Bear to return, Bramwell showed the other boy, other toys, how to make funny shadow pictures on the wall. Little Bear thought it was really good rabbit shape until he realised <laughs> it was rabbit. So he tried to make an elephant shadow instead, and Rabbit made a crocodile that could open up and shut its mouth. And the crocodile was just about to bite the elephant's trunk when Old Bear returned. I didn't see anything, he said, but someone has been here. All the things we left out have been tidy and put away. Well, wind doesn't tidy things up, said Little Bear, but I suppose a ghost might. Let's go together and take a look. The toys jumped down from the bed and tiptoed across the room, peering into the corners behind the furniture. Then they heard a noise right above their heads. Woo! That's it, cried Little Bear. That's the noise. It's on top of the cupboard. Noises weren't usually on their own, muttered Duck. They come from something. As he spoke, a white, uh, something white swooped down and landed beside the toy. Hello, everyone, it said. Little Bear dived for safety behind Old Bear, and they all stared in amazement at the little white owl with a blue apron on. Are you listening to the story? Yes. Well, what are you doing up all night? asked the owl. You're usually all fast asleep. He heard a soft, we heard a soft ghostly woo noise said Little Bear, peeping out from behind Old Bear. That was me, said Owl. 
I always do it. That's why they call me Toots. I heard a thump too, said Little Bear. Ah, that was my nest falling down, explained Hoot. Oh dear, said Old Bear. Where's your nest? Up there, replied Hoot, waving waving a wing towards the tall cupboard. Only now it's down there, he said sadly, pointing on the floor. But why have we never seen you before, said Little Bear. Ah, owls sleep during the day, said Hoot, and they only come out at night. And you do the, the opposite way round, and I was always careful not to wake you until my next Dada, yeah. bears don't awake at day. Bears don't. This is about owls. This is teddy bears, anyway. It's not like real bears. The toys all followed Hoot over to the fallen nest. It's made out of socks, said Bramwell in surprise, picking up one of the ones that had fallen out. Oh, no, said Hoot. I, I only use odd ones. I find them lying around and the socks are perfect for my nest and they're nice and warm. I always wondered where they went, said Little Bear. We've got a drawer full of socks that don't match. How will you get your nest back up there, Hoot? Hoot pulled on the nest and a sock came away in her beak. Oh, I don't suppose I can move it. It's going to fall apart if we move it. Hmm, I know something that would make a really good nest, said Little Bear. He rushed off with his torch and returned a few minutes later with a woolly bubble hat. This won't fall apart, fall apart he said, climbing, up, um, climbing into the hat. And it's very cosy. You try it, Hoot. Hoot carefully lowered herself into the hat and snuggled down. Oh, that's lovely, she said. Thank you, little bear. I wonder, I wonder if I'll be able to fly with it. Hmm. Old bear found a piece of string and gave it to Hoot. If you can fly up to your cupboard, then, with this string, he explained, we'll tie the other end to the hat and you can pull it up to the top. They're going to pull it up well, and I'm not going to spoil it. They're going to pull it up there and they're going to put it where the owl's nest used to be. Hoot said, that's wonderful. Hoot, Hoot was stepping out of the little nest on the floor and he says, I'll see you later. Spreading her wings, she flew right up on top of the cupboard with the end of the string in her beak. Little Bear tied the other end to the, to the string on the bobble hat and Hoot began to pull. Just as the hat was leaving the ground, Little Bear <gasps> gave a big leap and clung onto the bobble and Hoot tugged hard and the string and Little Bear and the bobble hat all rose into the air. So the Hoot flowed up and as the thing got higher Bear jumped on as he can jump and he grabbed on because he wanted to see what it's like up there. Mm -hmm. Hoot was busy pulling to sit uh, too busy pulling to see what was lifting up. So when little bear's ears suddenly popped up above the cupboard, she nearly dropped the string in surprise. <gasps> what are you doing? she asked, helping little bear up. I wanted to see what it was like up here, said little bear. Why don't you know how big it is? their wings. But how will oh. you get back down, asked Hoot. Hmm, I didn't really think about that, said Little Bear. Well, said Hoot, if you help me put my nest in the perfect place, I'll give you a ride back down on my back. That would be awesome, getting a ride back down on an owl's back. So, Little Bear helped Hoot find just the right spot for her nest, then climbed onto Hoot's back and she walked to the edge. <gasps> When she was on the edge of the cupboard, she said, Hold tight! And with that, a big flap of her wings, she <laughs> launched into the air. Look, I'm flying, called Little Bear, managing a quick wave to the others as they flew down onto the ground, swooped over the bed and landed gently beside Old Bear. Yay, Old Bear! Mm, I'm hungry now, said Hoot, as her passenger climbed down. It's the middle of the night, said Little Bear. Exactly, said Hoot. Lunch time for owls. She flew off and returned with her lunch, a pile of cheese and crackers wrapped in a handkerchief. Oh, lovely, cried Little Bear, staring at the, the midnight feast. I don't think there'll be enough for all of you, said Hoot, doubtful, doubtfully as she chewed. Uh, I don't think there'll be enough for all of you, said Hoot. Uh, I know what we, we should do. Maybe owls can have two 
a bear can have two, yeah. and there's and if there's one more left, they Al can said, crack it. Al said I wasn't expecting guests, but don't worry, said old bear. I don't usually eat in the middle of the night, nor does anyone else, so I don't think many of us will be very hungry. Um, I think I might be a little bit hungry, said Little Bear. And I think little I Bear's might be a little hungry. hungry. You're a little bit hungry too, are you? Yeah. Oh dear. Staring at the crackers, they decided, I know what, there'll be just enough for me and Little Bear. Will you join me, said Hoot. It'll be nice to have a friend for, for lunch I don't normally have anyway. Old Bear realised that the other toys were beginning to look very sleepy. So when all the food had been eaten, he said it was time to say good night to Hoot and go back to bed. I'm sure you'll see. Uh, we'll see you another night, he said, and we'll try not to be too noisy during the daytime. Um, now that we know that you're up there asleep, Little Bear was so tired and full, he had to be carried off to bed, and very soon all the toys were tucked up and fast. In the morning, they found that Hoot had been very busy in the night. All the socks were hanging from the end of the bed, um, and they'd been sorted into pairs. The socks from Hoot's nest, and all the matching ones from the sock drawer. Hoot had been very busy. The toys looked up at the cupboard and said, Thank you, Hoot. And then they said, Good night. They thought they heard a sleepy, Hee! Okay, so but this is how you it do might it. have just been mm -hmm. the wind. Do you think who was, do you think who was asleep? Do you? Yeah. Or do you think it was the wind? Uh, he was asleep mm. and he was snoring. <laughs> so that book was Hoot, which mm. Eddie won at school for being such a good little boy. What yeah. Was, what um, was the award called? Uh, I read four times. Because you read four times during the week. How many times have you read this week so far? Uh, two and two. Two times already, and it's only Monday, so we could be in for that competition again this week. Yep. But if you don't win, it doesn't matter, because someone else will win, won't they? Yay. So anyway, good night, everybody. Hope good you night. enjoyed listening to Hoot. Yeah. And we'll it's a really popular story, because I've uh, I've seen it on uh, YouTube. Yeah, okay. And tomorrow we'll have a new story, won't we? Daddy's tried to write his own story called yeah. uh, Martin the Spider. Martin the Spider. So if we have time tomorrow night, we'll do that for you. And we're actually new YouTubers, so we can uh, like be somewhere or and we live in Mystery Road. Well, we don't tell people where we live on YouTube. Why? they don't need to know where we live they can just watch us on youtube rather than coming and visiting us yeah but we just live we live in Missley road and we also live in colchester road yeah when you go to nanny and granddad's you go to colchester don't you yeah yeah so have a good day and have a good night and make sure you're quiet yeah. because if you fall asleep who might come and tidy your socks up for you yeah night night uh, should I need what? to tell them? Oh, there's you. something else you want to tell you? Yeah. Whoever wants to see our little brother sleeping, uh, they can see them. Yeah. Because should we just show them Harlan sleeping, yeah. shall we? I'll take the camera. Go and show them Harlan sleeping. Yeah. Harlan's sleeping. Harlan's sleeping. Harlan's sleeping. Everyone. I know. That little boy's name. My dad's name is Matthew, and I'm Eddie, and that's Harlan, and Claire is out there. That's Mummy. Night, night. Bye, bye. And I'm Eddie.